Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another VHS video. Today, I went out of my way to make one new mod and one new mutation for every single monster ability in the game, every single weapon in the game. I, I went out, I wanted to balance these. You know, you never know if the devs would want to add something like this in the game because currently there's only three mutations per monster ability in the game right now. And then I think there's like five mods per weapon, which is a lot. There is a lot in this game, but I was just thinking, since you progress past 17 levels with weapons, maybe there's gonna be more in the future and maybe this is some speculation as to what they might be or maybe this is just some of my own thoughts. Now I couldn't get like art designers or anything, I, I don't know anybody, but I, I couldn't design the uh, portraits myself or anything. So it's not gonna be portraits, it's just gonna be text on the screen. But um, instead of just posting these ideas to Reddit like you would with a normal um, monster idea or mutation idea or weapon mod idea, um, I decided to just turn it into a video instead of just doing a point by point reddit post so hopefully it's more interesting um, there's just gonna be a gameplay up on the background and then text on the screen of what my idea is and if you enjoy this video leave a like subscribe to the channel if you want more VHS content in the future also drop a comment if you have any cool weapon mod ideas or even just weapon ideas in general power ideas mutation ideas monster concepts whatever it might be post in the comments and I will check it out later so anyways let's hop into the video Okay, so let's start with mutations first. So the Doll Master. So the Doll Master has three powers. Doll Trap, Doll Possession, and Doll Teleportation. So let's start with Doll Trap. Doll Trap Mutation. Play Dead. Doll Traps no longer detect prone teens, but Doll Traps no longer detect crouching teens. What I was thinking here with this idea is something that really annoys me when I play Doll Master, how the teens that are downed constantly get picked up by the dolls. Since I just, I really want to use the dolls as motion sensors, but when there's a bunch of down teens, you never know uh, if that doll is giving you reliable motion sensor information. Trade off here would be that they could just crouch walk past your dolls basically, but at the same time, anyone that's prone will no longer be picked up. So you have a lot more information that way. So it kind of turns it into like a hag trap in uh, Dead by Daylight, if I can compare it that way. Hag traps can be crouched past by, by survivors in DBD, and it doesn't pick up um, downed people in DVD either. Doll Possession Mutation. Fain. The positive of this would be you can dismiss a doll while it's taking damage. And the negative, dismissing a doll causes all of your abilities to go on cooldown for 8 seconds. So the idea behind this mutation was that when you're controlling dolls and taking damage, you can just dismiss it right away, right on the spot, instead of it having to completely get destroyed by the teen and then stun you as the monster and reveal your location so it's a very big it's a very big positive the negative is though that every time you dismiss a doll all of your abilities will be on cooldown for eight seconds so it's kind of like you're being stunned except your your location isn't being revealed and you're not actually in that stun animation so it does have a pretty big downside for the really good positive side as well i think it'd be pretty balanced this way but i don't know let me know your thoughts let me know if any of these sound too op or too bad in any ways. I tried to design them with as much balance as I could. I also made a second doll possession mutation just because, you know, I don't know. I like doll master. <laughs> this one would be called screech. When you get a hit with the doll, your body will unleash a scream as well. So it's not just a single positive. It's one of the asterisk ones that just changed the power in general. And the reason this isn't just a complete positive is because when your body screams, it would of course like it, that reveals its location and puts a giant radar basically on the map. But sometimes as a doll master, you just want to commit to the chase with a doll. Even though your screen is glowing, you know someone's near your body with a weapon. With this mutation, you can actually commit to that chase, get the hit, and then your body will scream as well. So it just spices it up a little bit. Doll teleportation mutation. Imitate. The doll master can teleport to a possessed doll. You can choose teleport locations while possessing a doll. But teleporting to a doll will destroy it. So currently teleporting to a doll just puts it back in your inventory. This one would actually destroy the doll completely so that you'd have to get a hit to get it back. But this is also just a really nice quality of life thing that I just want. I want this mutation so bad on Doll Master. I think it's pretty balanced because it destroys the doll every time. But um, it could even have a, a little less of a negative. This is a pretty big negative for every time you teleport your doll gets destroyed. But uh, it's such a good quality of life change that I want. Being able to be like possessing a doll and walking around with it and then just hitting your teleport button and instantly appearing where that doll is that you're currently possessing would be so good. 
and also just being in a doll and being able to aim at other dolls and instead of possessing them you can actually just teleport your body to those dolls would also be really good so i really like this one now we move on to the werewolf mutations berserk mutation methodic berserk has no focusing time and the speed boost is increased by 25 percent but the werewolf's base movement speed is decreased by 6%. Now that negative there would probably have to be changed a little bit. I don't exactly know the correct percent that it would have to be uh, to be balanced. So you'd be like a really slow werewolf for the most part, but every time you berserk, you'll be faster than the average werewolf at the same time. That's why I gave it the name Methodic. You gotta plan out your berserk at the right times. Uh, but basically you'd have a lot less map pressure but at the same time, because even when you get a hit, your Berserk goes away. So this would be a pretty hard uh, mutation to use, but I think it can have some really cool plays with it, especially being able to hit someone and catch up 25% faster than the normal Berserk and with no focusing time as well. You just have to catch them in your base movement speed first, which is minus 6%. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that one, but you know, I had to make some werewolf mutations. <laughs> Howl mutation, violent. Howl now places omens on and exposes teens that are doing an interaction. Howl doesn't affect teens that are currently interacting with something though. So if they're currently healing, reviving someone, um, crafting, it won't interrupt their action, but it will place omens on and expose them through walls. So again, it's just one of those other trade-off. Uh, it kind of changes the power in a way, makes it a little more interesting. They'll know they're going up against it too because they'll be interacting and they'll be affected by the howl. They'll say they're exposed. They'll know they can probably maybe counterplay around it. I think it would have a lot of fun interactions in the match. Now on to Hunt. The Hunt mutation, Tracker. Hunt now visualizes footsteps left over the past five seconds. Footsteps can be seen through walls within six meters, but Hunt no longer detects heartbeats. So again, this one would just completely change up the power completely and not even make it about um, hunting down the teen's heartbeats anymore. You'd be able to see footsteps left over the past five seconds. I don't know if five seconds is too OP. At first, I, would, I made it three seconds, but then I was like, maybe that's too short. I don't know. That one would have to get some balancing, but <laughs> I like ideas and mutations, the weapon mods and stuff, like the bouncy Molotov, things that completely change up the ability altogether are really fun. Now onto the wart. Leap mutation. Backpedal. Without breaking line of sight, leap can be activated a second time within two seconds of a leap to jump back to the previous location before you leaped. So again, if we have to compare this to DVD, it's kind of like that nurse add-on. I think Spirit has one as well, but blink to a location, then press it again to go back to your previous location. Of course, you don't want the wart to be leaping through walls or around corners or in weird pathing ways, so I made it two seconds, and you have to still have line of sight, like it has to be basically right after you leaped. You can't even, with this, you wouldn't even be able to get a hit first and then leap back to your position. It's just basically if you mess up a leap, you can press it again, leap back. If they 360 you and go behind you, if you just want to catch someone off guard, I don't know. This would definitely be a fun mutation to like mess around with. Acid armor mutation. Manipulation. Armor lasts 30% longer and you are slowed 30% less while taking damage in armor but kill weapons that break your acid armor will stun you. So currently, if you're hit by a stun weapon or kill weapon and it breaks your armor, basically nothing happens. You're staggered for about like 0.75 seconds. It really does nothing at all, and it destroys the teen's weapon. With this, your armor will be up 30% longer, and you won't be slowed as much when taking damage, so you'll be able to maybe get a hit off. But if they do break through your armor with a kill weapon, it will act as a stun weapon on you and they could follow it up with another kill weapon. Kind of like how you have to counter Dollmaster right now, where you have to use a kill weapon on a doll or a stun weapon, and then follow it up with an actual kill weapon on the body. Teens can also counterplay this because they'd probably know that your armor is lasting 30% longer. As long as they don't destroy it, they'll see at the top of the screen how long it's lasting. And when they hit you with a weapon, they'll see that you're not being slowed as much as you should be. Sometimes that information alone is enough counterplay and enough of a downside to the power. Echolocation Mutation, Tracer. Echolocation exposes sprinting teens for 4 seconds. Echolocation no longer detects teens that are standing still or in a closet slash locker. So I was debating to call this one Tracer or Chaser, and 
And either name would work because you basically want to use this while in a chase anyways, while a teen is sprinting away from you. You echolocate them, and then they're exposed through walls for four seconds. Um, but anyone standing still, working at a bench, doing whatever, um, won't be picked up by this. Walking teens will still be picked up, crouch walking teens, but as long as they are standing still, they won't be. And sprinting people would be shown through walls and exposed. Okay, now that we're done with the monsters, let's move on to all the weapons. So a ray gun mod, steady. The ray gun can be aimed before firing, so you can actually right click with it. The rate of fire of the ray gun is reduced by 14%. This is also just another quality of life thing. Um, a lot of weapons you can ADS with, like the slingshot, but for some reason there's certain ones, like the ray gun, that you just have to left click and it just shoots. Personally, I would like to be able to like right click and hold it down and aim with it. Um, same with the flamethrower and radiant cross, I want to be able to do that. So it doesn't just start shooting right away, you can actually just like aim it a little bit. But yeah, that was my idea behind it, and it has a downside too. Minus 14% fire rate, so that's my idea behind that one. RC Flyer mod, Rapid Fluctuation. The RC Flyer moves 30% faster outside of the monster's tension track, but the RC Flyer cannot be deployed while in the monster's tension track. So you have to make sure you're far away from the monster before deploying the RC Flyer, and then you can fly really really fast to catch up to the monster's terror radius or I, I guess tension track and then once you're in there it's just basically a normal rc flyer but whenever you do lose the monster and are outside of its tension track you'll move super fast shock sphere mod bottled energy the shock sphere is crafted with 10 charges and can be used right away each fuse box gives the shock sphere 20 charge and can be used to replenish charges at any time but your max charge capacity is reduced by 50 percent so instead of having a shock sphere that can get up to 100 charge, you're only going to be left with 50 maximum. So when you craft it, you can use it right away, but it only has 10 charges, so it lasts about like 2 or 3 seconds while flying it around. But fuse boxes will always give it 20 charge, and you can do that at any time. You don't have to do it right away. If you go down to 1 charge left and you really need more charges, you don't want to discard the weapon, you can just go up to a fuse box and get more. This one, my idea behind it was just that um, sometimes your shock sphere will have like, even though a shock sphere only needs zero charge to actually get a kill, because you can just spawn it right in the killer's face basically, but if it ever is down super low, being able to go up to a fuse box and give it some charge at any point is really, really beneficial. Cursed Sword mod, Wave Crash. The Cursed Sword wake bounces once off of surfaces. The Cursed Sword has two less charges. This one's just another one of those really fun ones, and it even might be a little powerful. You might need to get rid of even more charges than that or have another big downside. But being able to shoot it at walls and then have it deflect off the wall and just extend a little bit more would be pretty cool to see. You could definitely do some weird plays with it, just bouncing it around off the walls, confusing the monster. Now onto the Infernal Eye mods, Cursed Whisper. The Infernal Eye summoning chant radius is reduced by 80% but the Infernal Eye can only be summoned while in the monster's tension track. So this one's a bit of a weird trade-off, but you'd basically, like the title says, a Cursed Whisper. Instead of just doing the big chant and a huge radius and the monster being able to hear you, it's reduced by 80%, so they have to be really close to be able to hear where your body's located. The only downside is you have to do this and release the Infernal Eye within the monster's tension track. So you already have to be close, but still, once they leave the area, and maybe you're outside the tension track now, your body will still remain there, you can still control the eye. So, that's the, the downside to it. I think this is one that I would definitely use on the Infernal Eye, and I think it would be pretty strong. Enigma mod, Danger Close. A charged Enigma will have 156 charges, but an uncharged Enigma will drain its charges at 0.75 charges a second. So the thing with this one is you'd have to just remain as close as possible to the monster, remain in its tension track while charging it, because if you are not charging it, it is going to be reducing its charges a bunch over a bunch of seconds. They're already pretty hard to charge up by themselves, especially on a doll master. Oh my gosh, I had to experience that yesterday. But this would make it even harder to charge. But once it is fully charged, you'll have a Enigma with 156 charges. Even though you might not really need to use 156, this could be used as a really good slowdown weapon. And once it's fully charged, it also won't drain at all. 
The negative was just for a while it's charging. Flamethrower mod, burning streaks. Gain 12% movement speed while firing the flamethrower, but you lose 4% movement speed while carrying a flamethrower. This would be a fun one to experiment with. You would get a lot less distance going around the map and while in chase, um, it could be really dangerous to hold a flamethrower in chase, but while actually firing the flamethrower, you'll move 12% faster and be able to maybe catch the monster off guard with that bonus movement speed. The firebomb mod, trailblazer. This is a really fun one that I came up with. The firebomb drips a line of flames through the environment as it flies through the air, but the firebomb's visualized aiming arc can't be seen by the teen and the distance the firebomb can be thrown is reduced by 15%. I feel like this one would be really, really fun to use. You just toss a firebomb through the air and the whole way it goes, it's dripping a big path of flames as it goes and then it lands creating the normal Molotov splash area. The only downside, you can't throw it as far and you can't see the visual arc of where it's going to land. So you'd have to get pretty good at throwing them on your own and judging the distance for yourself. Solar Flare mod, Star Growth. When placed, the Solar Flare has a reduced size of 10% its normal size. The Solar Flare expands over 12 seconds to 200% normal size covering a large area. Also just another fun one to use, you'd have to have a little bit of setup with it having to place it and it being only 10% its normal size. But over 12 seconds, you'll be able to cover a huge portion of area, kind of similar to the amount of area you'd cover with the mod that lets you spawn two sunstones, or I mean, solar flares. But uh, I think the I think it could be a fun one to experiment with. And you don't have to have the downside of, um, if you don't like the double solar flare mod, the downside would just be, you can't really just activate this in a chase since it's only 10% its normal size. You'd have to actually have some setup. Radiant Cross mod, Graceful Conversion. The Radiant Cross can be given to another teen, but you can't hold other items while holding the Radiant Cross. And the part of that negative is just, uh, I wouldn't want the devs to have to make another hotkey or whatever to hand over your weapon. Instead, you'd just press the normal button, which is R to hand over your weapon to another teen, since you won't be able to hold like a pop can and hand it over to them anyways, because that downside doesn't let you hold their weapons. I think the name fits. I think it would be really fun to use. Uh, maybe trick the monster a little bit. They know that the Gloria has a Radiant Cross, but actually they have this mod on that allows them to hand it to the whoever, Leo or whatever. This could also be a perk in the future, allowing teens to share weapons with each other. Holy Slingshot mod watching over while the monster is suffering damage built up from the holy slingshot and for two seconds afterwards its aura is revealed to you and all other teens with purify weapons failing a skill check at a purify crafting station will reset progress by 15 percent and expose you for three seconds so in this one i know a lot of the holy weapons have like bible terminology some holy stuff they have graceful in the names faithful all the stuff i made this one like almost like an angel's kind of watching over you and it's kind of watching over the monster as well. When you do damage to them, whoever's watching over reveals the monster to you and everybody with purify weapons. And then whenever you actually mess up at a purify crafting station, they'll expose you and reset the progress by 15%. A little bit of lore to that one. All these names are actually really hard to come up with, but I did it, so that's good. And lastly, the Sacred Staff mod, Mercy's Commandment. The Sacred Staff can be beamed at teens to heal or pick up from afar, but cannot be used on the monster. And of course, this would still charge like normally. I don't mean it can heal from afar like while charging. You'd still have to charge it, go up to a teen, um, or heal yourself with it to charge 100%. The only thing is when you left click to do your damaging ability, it won't affect the monster, but you can aim it at teens instead to heal them. And then it'll break once it's out. It's kind of like those mods that change your kill weapons into stun weapons, um, but this one changes it into a heal weapon. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed all my uh, mod ideas and mutation ideas that I came up with. Let me know yours down below if you have any. Uh, let me know which one you'd like to see in the game as well. And not that I could do anything about it, but it's still cool to know if anybody likes these ideas. And um, subscribe, leave a like if you want. Dislike it if you want. I'll see you guys in the next video.